Good afternoon, folks. It's Arbor Day 2021. I am the city arborist for Burlington, Vermont, and today we are on the campus of the University of Vermont. The University of Vermont is a tree campus USA, as it designated by the National Arbor Day Foundation. And the city of Burlington is also a tree city USA for the past 27 years. Today we're gonna to demonstrate tree planting and particularly bare root tree planting. Um, typical of Arbor Day at UVM, it's overcast and raining today. It's about 45 degrees, but I can't think of anything better to do in the rain on Arbor Day than plant a tree. So if you're planting a tree um, on your own property or on public property, First thing you want to do is to make sure before you stick a shovel in the ground that there are no utilities underground that you might run into problems with. So we marked the site here, we call Dig Safe. It's a toll free number. They notify all the utilities in the area. They came out, you'll see markings on the ground here where they said we are okay. There is nothing underground here. Um, if we were planting this tree on a front lawn, this tree is actually going to go in a landscape bed, but if we were planting it on a front lawn where you have established sod, the first thing I would do is cut a very large circle in the sod and strip that sod off just, just below the root system and skim that sod off. You can throw it on your compost pile. You can uh, use it to patch holes in your lawn. You probably I typically don't put it back in the tree planting hole because I find it really hard to chop it up and get good soil root contact. But today we're fortunate we're planting in a landscape bed so we don't have to remove the sod here. So we're going to dig a, I'll show you the root system of the tree in a minute here, but we want to dig a hole that's typically much wider than our existing root system. That's not the case here because we got a landscape bed with a lot of loose soil and the roots will find their way very easily through here. Um, the tree we're planting today is a hybrid maple and we are planting very close proximity to some larger trees here. These trees are green ash. The green ash, as we all know, is threatened by the emerald ash borer, which has been found in the state and is very close by. And the university and the city have no intention of treating these trees with an insecticide over time to retain them. So our thought is we've got space in here, let's get some new trees going in between the existing ash, let them get a foothold, start growing really well, and then when the ash have to come down, we'll already have their replacements in place. This is a hybrid maple, it's a cross between our native silver maple and red maple and its cultivar name is Firefall. It's gonna have a beautiful red fall color. Um, really good choice for this location. So you can see today, we're planting this tree bare root. So we can see the entire root system of the tree. This was grown in the nursery that the city of Burlington has on University of Vermont property with with the volunteer group branch out Burlington so this tree was dug from the soil all the um, soil was shook from its roots it was dipped in water in a hydrogel a polymer to kind of keep the root systems moist very important when you're planting a bare root tree to keep this root system moist until the time of planting all these fibrous roots are very vulnerable to drying out and dying but we can retain them if we keep it moist. Um, people often ask me, would you prune the roots of this tree before planting it? My answer would be only if it needs to happen. And the only reason you'd print, prune any of these roots is if we saw any roots that were encircling or potential future girdling roots, we would cut those off. Um, and anything we see that got damaged in the digging process. You can see here on the ends of some of these root tips here, this is where, when this tree was planted in the nursery, this is where the root was pruned off. And we had new uh, fibrous root system growing from the end of that cup. 
So when I plant a tree like this, I make a fresh cut on the ends of any damaged roots where this was dug. And I find that you'll get better subsequent root growth off that nice fresh cut than a damaged root tip. So that's really all I'm doing to it. Just a few cuts out on the end here. And we don't want to remove any more of the root system. That's all stored energy. There's fibrous roots that are going to be able to uptake water and nutrients. So we're retaining as much of the root system as we can. As you can see, this is a pretty nice sizable tree. <laughs> and it's pretty nice planting it with no soil on the roots. Anybody can do it, it's very easy. So we're gonna dig a hole here, and I always like to use a tarp to put my soil on. You can save yourself a lot of time cleaning up. And we're probably gonna find some roots of the ash trees in here, but we'll work around them. And you want your backfill soil to be chopped up really well, because we want it to backfill really well and make good contact with the roots of this tree when we put it in. You can see this root system's relatively shallow. That's typical of this species. Other species might have a much deeper root system. So I don't need to dig a very deep hole. So Lexi's gonna fast forward here so you don't hear me huffing and puffing and make it look like I can dig a hole really quickly. So it doesn't look like we have much of a hole here, but again, this root system is relatively shallow on this tree. If I turn it to the side, you can see very much like a pancake. Um, the most critical thing probably in planting any tree is the depth of planting. <clears throat> if you walk out in the woods, and you look at large trees growing out in nature, there's always a very pronounced flare at the base of the tree. Tree roots, the majority of tree roots want to be in the top profile of the soil <clears throat> because of, and I'm now getting out of breath from digging the hole, <laughs> because of um, oxygen. Tree roots need oxygen. So you often see a big tree that uprooted, even a very large tree, it's kind of a pancake. It's not a lot of deep roots. There might be some anchor roots, but the vast majority of the roots uptake in water and nutrients are in that top profile of soil. What we see here is a graft union of the tree. And the actual root flare or root collar, the transition between the trunk and the roots is down here. And this is the depth we want to plant at. We want our finished soil line to be right here. So that's why I didn't dig very deep. So now Mark's going to step in and give me a hand here. And we are planting on a bit of a slope here, which makes it a little more challenging because we don't want to backfill too deep on the backside. So we got to kind of break the difference. So a good way to check if you're at the right depth is to take a flat shovel handle or something and lay it across the hole with your existing grade on both sides and where the bottom of that is should be right at your root flare so i'm thinking we look pretty good there so mark's going to hold the tree straight <clears throat> again we want this backfill soil to be well chopped up and if there's any large rocks or debris in there, you'll want to take them out. It just makes for better backfilling and better contact with those roots, which is key.
And usually when I get to about this point with these bare root trees, if your soil's loose, if you take the tree and give it a light shake like that, you'll see the soil settling down in between those larger roots. And that's exactly what we want. We want really good soil to root contact there. And then when we get to this point, we can make it real easy by taking our tarp and dumping the rest of our soil in there. No mess, no fuss. And don't be afraid to get right in there with your hands or oftentimes with these bare root trees. I'll take a stake or the handle of the shovel and do a little bit of tamping in there. Again, to help settle that soil in around that root system, make sure we eliminate any air pockets. And you can also do a little light tamping with your feet. You don't want to really stomp down hard. But again, just firming that soil. You can see our graft union here and our root flare right at the surface. Especially on a slope, but even on a flat surface, sometimes it's helpful to leave a little bit of a rim of soil here. And what that does is in a heavy rain or where you're, when you're watering, creates a little bit of a catch basin for water so that it'll filter down through to that root system. So now we'll want to put a little mulch on that and then we're going to stake it. <clears throat> so why do we mulch trees? Big reason for me is to keep the lawnmowers and weed whackers away. <laughs> but um, trees in their natural environment, <clears throat> we've got this constant cycling of nutrients and organic matter, leaves, debris falling, breaking down over time. It helps to keep the soil temperatures cooler, provides a great environment for microorganisms that are beneficial to the tree, keeps the moisture in, keeps the weeds down, and out in your lawn with a big circle, keeps the competition of the weeds away from the sh those shallow roots, and also keeps your lawnmower from hitting it or your weed whacker. So mulch is a good thing. Too much mulch kills trees. And at this time of year, if you ride around, you will see landscape maintenance companies out over mulching landscape trees and plants and killing them slowly over time. So what we're doing here is we put about two to three inch layer of mulch in this area and never up against the base of the trunk of the tree and the bark of the tree. So I've cleared it away there. I can see my root flare and I'm just spreading a thin layer. And that mulch should never exceed that two, three inch layer. That is not three inches every year, year after year. It's three inches total. So that's really important. Um, should you stake trees? If the tree is in a place where it's not exposed to high winds and you're confident that it's really sturdy in there, I recommend not staking trees. This tree is in a high wind area. It's a young tree with a shallow root system in some pretty nice soil, but loose soil. So we are gonna put a couple stakes on this tree. I've just got hardwood stakes here and I'm gonna put them out about 18 inches away from the base of the tree. I've got my handy pounder here. Don't hit yourself in the head. Gonna pound them in six, eight inches so they're good and sturdy. And then they make special straps for doing this. They make nylon straps that have a grommet on both ends. I really like those. 
I didn't have any of them left today because we've planted over 200 trees in the city this spring, but anything to protect the trunk of that tree from the wire. So I'm using a 12 gauge wire that you can buy at your hardware store. And I've got a piece of old garden hose. So if you have an old garden hose around, you can cut it in pieces. And then you try to thread your wire through it. Here, I'll let you do the other one, Mark. <laughs> And we, of course, we want to make sure the tree is straight and we're happy with it from all directions. And then we are going to go around the trunk of the tree, but not completely around it, just around one side. And I'm going to take my wire, go around the post a couple of times, twist it. I'm going to twist it here to hold it. We'll do the same thing on the other side here. And, you know, we want to make it firm so it's not going to blow over, but we want the tree to have some movement because trees will actually, um, been a lot of studies that show that that movement of the tree actually stimulates root growth. So, Again, we're just pretty simple, just going right around the, got plenty of wire here, around the stake so it won't slide up or down, twist it hard, come back around, use up our excess. And we'll clip that off and I can, I can tighten this a little by just spinning the wire with with my pruners like that. So now you can see the tree can still move, but it's not going to blow over. And it's that simple. Um, what's critical now is keeping this tree well watered. A tree this size in an average summer and throughout the establishment period, which is not just this year, it can be next year as well, 15 to 20 gallons of water a week when we're not getting good soaking rain. Best way to do that is they make these watering bags, often called gator bags, that zip around the trunk of the tree. They have a determined amount of water, 15 to 20 gallons. You fill them once a week. They have small pinholes at the bottom of the bag. It's a slow soaking over several hours. So it really gets down into that critical root zone. You know, if you came out here with a hose, it's really hard to know how much water you put on. And if you tried to put 20 gallons of water on, 18 of it would run off and never be at the root system of the tree. So you just give it a kiss and we're done. <laughs>